Hi, what's up? I'm recording on a Sunday, baby. I feel so drowsy. I took this allergy medicine because the allergies are absolutely killing me right now in a lovely state of Florida. But my eyes are itchy. It's it's a lot. <laughs> and I took some allergy pills and they kind of made me a little drowsy. I'm like, we're gonna record today. We're gonna stick it through because I'm a always show up not just for you but for me too all right so you might hear a lot of those <laughs> but bear with me okay because episodes gonna be good today all right it makes me think girl you said it every time and i believe it <laughs> all right let's get into it what up, crew? What's good? It's your girl, Shade, ready, locked in for another episode of the Crew Book Club podcast. And let me tell you guys, everything is aligning. Uh, whew, my, it's been a week since I've been back from my vacation from Mexico, and I had the most amazing time. It was very beautiful, definitely well needed, and I realized, like, I cannot be one of them people who vacation every day. I was ready to get back to it, get back to work, grind it out some, and then, you know, be ready for the next one. So let's get back on track. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm back on track. Coming back, it was getting back into the gym was a little tough. I was actually sore, sore. Like that soreness you feel when you first start working out again. I... Getting it back to the habit of my work schedule and things like that. Hence, i.e., I am recording on a Sunday because <laughs> last week was just packed. Some amazing things happened last week that I pray continue to unfold in front of you guys. You know, the thing about when you're growing and elevating, when God gives you, uh, Remember, because was, I was just talking about how last week, it's like, okay, God, what you want me to do? What you want me to do? And he was like, keep doing what you're doing. Literally, it showed up why he needed me to keep doing what I'm doing. Just know that. And so, just, I want you to continue to focus, continue to be consistent. You never know who's paying attention. And listen and have that discernment with Christ. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you are in a relationship, not just the religion of it all, it's relationship, okay? You're constantly connecting. You're constantly getting to know, know him. Even those times where you have to force yourself to get into your word and connect with Christ, do that. The same as if you're in a marriage and you're constantly growing and knowing your spouse or Whoever your significant other is, you're constantly wanting to call and text them and spend time with them, get to know, get to know them. That is the same energy plus more you need to be putting into your relationship with Christ, not just the religion of it all. Because I hear a lot of people go, you know, I talk to God. I'd be like, I do a little prayer here and there, but I'm not a religious person. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about relationship. When you're in a relationship with someone, it is the effort to get to know, the effort to constantly grow. And that's what the relationship with Christ is. It's just not a side piece of, you know what, God, get me through this. And I want to thank you. Help me. Because it makes me think, and this has nothing to, well, it has everything to do with me talking to you. And it should have been what would the crew do. Um, but I'm going to give this. I was talking to someone this week and the experts was like shut what do you do to keep yourself sane and together when things when you feel like you've been doing something and it's not going the way you want it to go and i said lord jesus isn't this the right question to ask me at this very moment because i was just struggling like okay god what else you want me to do i've been doing this what you want me to do and <laughs> to be able to answer them i said it's my relationship with God. And I was like, well, I'm not a religion person. I said, well, maybe you need to try something other than religion with Christ. Maybe you need to search him beyond just speaking to the him every now and then. So I challenge you, just like everybody else who may have a relationship with Christ, but you have to constantly grow your relationship with Christ and elevate. And there are steps and levels to that too. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to come out the gate 
If you ain't have a regular relationship with God and come out of the gate doing everything that he has planned for you, there's baby steps to this and that's okay. And when the time is right, he'll take you to another level. But this time, in this moment, do extra, challenge yourself to go the extra mile in your relationship with Christ. Stop thinking about it as a religion and think about it as a relationship. Okay, <laughs> so that kind of leads into the first segment of the show. Who going to check me, boo? God is. He is always checking us and we deserve a good check, Zach, because it keeps us what? In check. Okay, so this particular check totally aligns with the book that we're doing. We should all be millionaires about the money, 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 money. Money. <laughs> we going to get to the bag with peace okay that's 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 the goal and so on the who on check me boot i've been able to catch up catching up with the transformation church series michael todd pastor michael todd and i was super excited to get into this series called money follow mastery and i finally had a chance to listen to part one and it's just perfect timing and aligning with the book that we're in and the scripture he preached about on part one was deuteronomy 28 12 and it's reads the lord will open you to his good treasure the heavens to give the rain of your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands Ooh, you shall lend to many nations but you shall not borrow <laughs> i am no longer a borrower i am a lender and i give and I am a mastery of my coins, <laughs> okay? All right, the points that check me and trust me, I'm hoping they will check you too, you too. And it was use money as a resource to do what God has called us to do, right? A lot of times, and I struggle with this too, I was using money for me. What could Shade do for Shade? Now, when I look at the mastery of money, okay, God, you can trust me enough to give me abundance and me to be able to pour it back into your children, okay? And that doesn't go just because you believe in God. Remember, when he's talking about his children, he's talking about the atheist, he's talking about the person who doesn't talk to him, he's talking about the person who dissed him. God still sees them as his children, okay? So that's where... We need to use the money of resource, okay, to help his, all his children and to know who to help is to be in relationship with Christ so you can have the discernment. He can tell you how to use your resources, okay? The other point was money requires management. That's the only way to get more money. He will take it away if not managed properly. Hashtag, don't play with God. <laughs> There's a story about a gentleman who took money and buried it which is a waste, right? And other people receive money and at least did something with it. And God wants you to do something with it, not to bury it, not to sit on it and spend it on just you, okay? Because baby, if you don't manage it and steward it correctly, God will take it away. The same as your gifts. He's, he, he can wait on you, but let me tell you something. The will of God will get done with or without you. You have choice, but that will gonna get done, okay? The other one was how you manage your money checks your motive. Hashtag, are, you inten are your intentions good? Okay, God knows your intentions and how you plan to use the money that you're working for. Okay, um, the other one was what I have is enough. You can be generous with what you already have. Some people say, well, I don't have it to give. I don't have it to give. And it's like, if he, if you can't store with the small with the funds you have now what makes you think if you get blessed with more you'll be able to steward that to to be generous with that be generous with you have know your limits and just from my experience when god <laughs> when god tell me to do it i do it even if it's i'm looking at my bank and i'm like oh mm, you know god you know i ain't really got that right now but he will make a way. If he told you to do it and you do it, he needs to see that you're willing to sacrifice for him. Okay, that's the test of it all. And he will, trust me, he will bless you with more. The other one was money comes with focus. Doing good in all things. 
okay? And one of the things that Pastor Todd talked about was um, being at a job, doing, not doing something because you don't like the boss because the boss has asked you to do something. Listen, it's not about you doing it at a standard that the boss wants you to do it. It's about serving God and showing God that I can show up and do a good job regardless of the situation I am in. An example a lot of people use is the janitor. If I'm going to be a janitor, I'm going to be the best during janitor. I'm going to clean the toilet the best. I'm going to sweep the best. If you're at the computer all day, you're going to do the best whatever cubby hole stuff you need to do because if you can't do that in there what makes you think you can go out in entrepreneurship and have the discipline then it's harder <laughs> trust and believe it's harder to have discipline as an entrepreneur than it is for you to go on a job have a direction and go as an entrepreneur you have to be um you have to have dedication you have to have systems you're doing all of that you're everything into it and if you can't do at a level of excellence at the job that you're in now, God needs to see that he can trust you to give you more, okay? So money comes with focus and doing it in all things, even the things that may not make sense that doesn't line up with money, okay? I was telling my friends, you know, uh, one of my small discipline things was doing the dishes every day or taking my shoes off at the door out of respect for me because if i'm asking other people to do it then i need to be doing it myself and that was also a form of setting boundaries so check out the first series of money follow mastery part one it's a really good series and i'm hopping into part two uh this week okay so i'm gonna put the link in the show note for that for that sermon as well oh and also in the episode he offered this dave ramsey program for free for transformation church so it'll help you get some steps in how to manage and master your money all right as always i appreciate the crew love please leave a review wherever you listen to the podcast if you can specifically my apple iphone users if you can please leave a five-star review and if you leave a written review i will share it right here on the pod and give you a shout out i would really appreciate it we want the crew to grow and that is definitely a way for you to grow show me some crew love please all right also, you already know, you showed me crew love. I'm going to make sure I have some resources for you. And that's why we have our partnership with betterhelp.com slash crew love. That's better, dot com slash crew love. They're the sponsors of this episode. And, we, and I appreciate their partnership because I actually use them when I am in therapy. BetterHelp is absolutely amazing. It doesn't limit your pot to your local therapist. You have options. So if you feel like you can't find it in your local area, you can find it. Trust me, you can request and find therapists on BetterHelp. You take a questionnaire, you find what fits you, and they link you to a professional therapist that is specifically helped to help you in the areas that you need to focus on. Okay, so definitely check that out. They also have... Um, uh, financial aid. So if you're struggling or not receiving the funds, reach out to them, let them know what you can do, and they will work with you. Be honest and transparent, and don't be afraid to ask. They are there to help you, hence better help, okay? So do those things, leave a review, and get your therapy on, and that's a 10% of your first month of professional therapy. All right, so let's get into our therapy of money, okay? We should all be, be millionaires. Miss Rachel Rogers, baby, thank you for the points in this book and, and the vulnerability that you have in the motivation and the check, the check, the check me booze of it all. Okay. In chapter four, we're gonna be covering million dollar boundaries. And then chapter five, we're gonna do million dollar squad, squad up. All right. So chapter four, million dollar boundaries, the quote opens with a girl should be two things who and what she wants, all right? And this is like, this for all my mommies real quick. She says, my daughter is a master negotiator. She gets it from her mama. Unfortunately, her preferred negotiation tactic is the guilt trip, okay? She'll stop by my office while I'm knee deep in a pile of work, intensely focus on my laptop and say, are you still working? I wish you had time to play with me. What an adorable pain in my ass. 
<laughs> oh my god summer is coming up and i this year my child needs to be in somebody daycare a hundred percent and she says here of course this used to work very well on me i would immediately be riddled by the guilt and uh -uh, not anymore <laughs> okay you pay 60 you get whacked around all day long and end of day frustrated that the things were actually important to you never got done not saying that your child is not important it's there's work that is important for us to provide for our kids okay please understand the perspective i'm coming from she says hell no nah, my friends <laughs> as a species a woman must stop giving away our power to our spouses to our bosses and yes even to our children when we allow our other people's desires to take precedence over our own, it creates a situation like the one you have today where many women have no idea what they really actually want. We become so accustomed to the world telling us what to do that we no longer hear our own voices that ends now, okay? Also on page 60, she says, my children are not entitled to my attention all day. Every day I work because I want to. I find joy in helping other women and other mothers. And I frankly don't want to set a precedent for my children that how adults spend her time should be predicated by first graders. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. It says here on page 61. So what do I say to my beloved daughter when she tries to lay that learned guilt trip on me? Which is learned is through the media and everything else in our society. She says here, most other moms have to, she says <laughs> to her daughter, most other moms have to get in their car and commute for an hour, go to work, be gone eight hours, and then commute back. I'm here when you get home from school. I get to see you whenever I take a break from my work day. Isn't that awesome? We, she's not moved by that. So then she says, this is a family and we all get the benefit from mommy's work. You get to go on great, to a great school. You live in a nice house. We eat good food and we do fun things together like kayaking and travel. But we all have to contribute too. So go entertain yourself while I take this call. That's your contribution to our family today. Can you make that contribution? Whoa, this is good. She says, by talking to my daughter about the realities of life, and my own desires to work as a well as be a mom, I'm respecting her enough to be honest with her. I am also setting the expectation of our relationship. I am letting her know that even as my beloved daughter, she is not entitled to every waking moment and I don't exist solely to meet her needs. Woo, this is so good. I don't want her to grow up in an adult woman who thinks that her desires don't matter and that everyone needs are more important than hers, her own. It starts early. I want to be the example for of that. And it's also setting the boundary, right? And if you're the mom who's like, well, I don't provide all that. Not yet, <laughs> okay? If you're kind of like, well, I do work at the eight hours, da 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 da. So maybe one of the boundaries that you can set is when mommy gets home, mommy needs a minute to decompress because the job that I was at was super busy and it and it kind of stressed mommy out and my feelings were kind of all over the place. Same as if you're in school and something might happen and it's relation, make it relational to them, but also being honest to respect your feelings and then you respecting theirs, okay? It's so cute. I was at a baby reveal party for my nephew and we thought it was a boy and they had it where you would write down the name that you suggest, if it's a boy or girl and the advice and my daughter had the cutest advice she said listen to your child because they have feelings too and it's like understanding her feelings and and, it, and I was just so proud because it feels like it just showed that I'm doing the right thing and I'm validating her feelings as well being able to express myself to her in a way that she understands without it being overbearing or too much information for a child to process these kids are smart and how we grew up back in the day of not knowing and, and things being hidden from us, it naturally did not prepare us for where we're at now to be present for the opportunities. And that's why we have to unlearn and read books like this to get us in line to master money. Okay? 
So that was really, really, really good about the boundaries with that. And then <laughs> on page 64, if that didn't help you, that emotional side, I want you to think about this too. Listen, it says visible household work, cooking dinner, washing dishes, folding laundry, lint rolling dog hair off the sofa cushion is not the only problem. There is also invisible workload that is placed on women. According to sociologist Susan Walzer, the invisible workload includes intellectual, mental, emotional work of child care and household maintenance. Women do more of the learning and information processing like research um, pediatricians, wondering if their child is hitting their development milestones, deciding when the mattress needs to be flipped or, what, or when to cook dinner. Even when their male partners, quote unquote, helped out by doing their fair share of chores and errands, it was the woman who noticed what needed to be done. Isn't it always? <laughs> and she says here, house managers who run households of high net worth individually, individuals routinely make $100,000 or more doing the same things, okay? So when you serve as a de facto house manager for your household, know that you're performing a second full-time job in which people who do this professionally are paid six figures and we're not done. Are you tired yet? I'm exhausted just talking about it. She said, frankly, piss. Just think about all the work and responsibilities women take on nowadays. And it is so true. There was a study that showed being a mom is having us is like having two or three jobs. And I told one of the advice that I gave uh, was don't be hesitant not to delegate and tell your baby's father, uh, husband, what needs to be done and asking him to do it. And women, we have to allow them to mess up for them to get it right. Because imagine somebody telling you to do something and then you don't do it right. Then they come over there, well, this is why I don't ask you to do that because you don't do it right. All you're doing is hurting yourself. Give them some grace, allow them to mess up, teach them how to do it. And they will do it their own way. Long as it gets done, it has. it doesn't always have to be your way. You know what I'm saying? So let them figure it out. Let them do it. Let them mess up and let them show up. Okay. So going on to page seven, and these are the last few points I'll give for chapter four. I feel like we may need to pause and do chapter five next week because for the second time, but I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. On page, page 70, I'm gonna click on these three points here. It says... The section is titled, Boundaries Are the Solutions. Maybe your partner got the impression that you love cleaning the kitchen because they saw you play music and dance while you did dishes and wiped down the counters. They didn't realize that this was your coping me mechanism for not murdering them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And this is why it's so important to communicate. It, another one was, it's also important to note that when you set a boundary, don't do it to piss someone off to get even or to make someone else suffer. Set a boundary because it serves you, not because it hurts someone else. This is where your intentions need to be good because people can read past the BS, okay? The other one, the other point I like that she made, don't set boundaries to make someone else suffer. Set boundaries to prevent your own suffering, okay? Then she has, of course, another cool list to replace broke ass boundaries with million dollar boundaries and i'm gonna just tell you the one <laughs> there's a few of them and if you want this list i'll personally email it to you if you just email the crew book club at gmail.com and put um million dollar boundaries it says you tell your children that you have to focus on work during work hours while sitting in your home office they interrupt you 23 times you entertain their requests and interruptions never um every time the million dollar boundary you need to make is you tell your children that you have to focus on work doing work hours and not to interrupt you unless someone is bleeding i do the same thing while sitting in your home office you work with the door locked there are little to no interruptions. You finish your work early and give your kids your undivided attention. So when you do spend time with them, 
make sure you're attentive and on your phone. And my daughter, she would take my phone and put it to the side. I'm like, okay, girl, I, 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 I see you and I hear you. <laughs> okay, now let's get into chapter five. And there's a lot of good, y'all. Like I'm literally giving you, those are just the nuggets. There's plenty of others in here. So you definitely need to order the book. The book you can order in the show notes as well. All right. Let's get into chapter five, Million Dollar Squad. Okay. Hashtag the crew. <laughs> AKA the crew. This is what we're doing. She has it here on page five. And I'm. this is exactly aligns with the crew. Building a community of ambitious, intentional women around you who are also on the journey of building wealth and success is crucial, okay, through reading dope books. That's my add-on. That's how we're going to get there. Taking a, We about that action, taking the things that we learned in this book and putting it into play, okay? So, let's talk about it some more. Page 78, it mentions... Is it so much harder to reach your full potential when you are hanging with people who are not interested in personal development in reaching their own definition of success? Okay, your success is in your squad. I, I cannot stress this enough. And this is why I started the crew, okay, through reading books. It says here, 95% of your success or failure in life is determined by the people with whom you habitually associate. 95% my friend, okay? If you literally do nothing but join a success squad, you will make more money by osmosis. Just by spending time connecting with successful people on a regular basis, you will find more success for yourself. This is why I feel comfortable telling potential clients with me, my team and clients, you'll make more money just hanging out with us. I'm coming right you girl. I'm getting it together, okay? Because I'm definitely building my million dollar squad and I'm not leaving nobody behind. Don't get me wrong. It's just, I'm trying to up the ante and find my, my, my next tribe. That's what it takes. It's levels to this. Remember, it's levels, all right? On page 83, it talks about many women lack a strong network. To be clear, I am not suggesting you stop being friends and you only choose to connect with people based on what they can do for you in your career. But I'm suggesting that in addition, addition to hanging out with your friends, you find folks to connect with who have similar interests as you. If your squad is not quite where you want to be and the homies are not matching your ambition, you are not alone. 48% of female founders report that a lack of available advisors and mentors limits their professional growth. Sadly, this is gender network gap because men don't have that same problem. It says, and women in the United States are 28% less likely than men to have a strong networking group, according to LinkedIn. I need to get on LinkedIn. That reminds me. So, on page 85, it notes here, building your trusted community of ambition peers is key to closing gender and racial pay gaps. So go get your new friends and you will be contributing to economic equality. New, no new friends, no Drake. New friends, new friends on new levels, on new levels, okay? <laughs> and it's okay to meet those new friends, take the information you learn and help give it to your friends in your community. And that's a, that I'm on. I'm on that. And so you being a part of the crew is going to benefit you. Okay. I'm trying to tell you, I'm going to bring it back to you. Okay. Also on page 85, it talks about, you don't need a white man to get ahead. I've seen it. Oh, I'm a, this while, you know, this while I work with our people, da, 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 da. Aunt wrong. You getting it wrong. Listen to this for my women. Oh, my women. Okay. Listen, 77% of the highest achieving woman had a close inner circle of two to three other women. But women who had a male-dominated network and lacked strong ties with other women were less likely to acquire a high-paying position. Women need other women to get ahead. So for that woman, you know, I don't hang out with females because I don't get along with... You hanging out with the wrong women. 
That's what you're doing. You're hanging out with the wrong women. You need to be hanging out with the women who you can talk to, not be jealous with, be ambitious, but not be looking at sideways. That's going to refer clients to you. That's going to support and share your business. You don't need the hater. You hang with the wrong women. Women, we need each other. We we gonna knock if you see what we're doing in just 50 years of having access to the things that we have access for and the stuff we fought for. Imagine us really coming together with good intention, wholeheartedly supporting each other to get it done. You know what I'm saying? Let's come together, women. We are more powerful together, and we don't need the quote unquote white man to get us there. All right. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> and I'm going to end chapter five on this, okay? How to build your million dollar squad. I want you to consider these things, she says on page 92. Does this person bring wealth, energy, power, peace, and or joy into your life consistently? Consistently, okay? Does this person bring financial riches into your life? client referrals, job leads, genuine, genius money-making ideas? Does this person bring emotional riches into your life? Boost my mood, make me believe I can do anything, inspire me to take better care of myself, make me laugh like a hyena, <laughs> okay? Does this person help me climb the million-dollar mountain, moving ever closer to the peak, like the trusted, I don't know that, or, wait, Serpa, like a trusted Serpa, or are they dragging me down to the depths? Okay, um, check those, see if those people are checking those boxes. If they're not checking those boxes at all, you need to consider the tribe that you're hanging with. You know what I'm saying? You need to hang out with people that elevate and add value to your life. If you're in a circle and you're not getting any value from that circle, not saying you need to ditch them. What I'm saying is you need to go out and find that. Here are some things you can do to start building a robust community of business besties. Be a joiner. Join something. The crew, hey. Find your people. Reconnect with the community you already have. If you've been listening to, to the crew and haven't came to a mastermind or one of the virtual meetups virtually where we can talk and go deep dive into these you need to get more involved create your own community i did i couldn't find the tribe that i was looking for so i'm here to create it and to grow it okay so those are some ways that you can build your million dollar squad okay Consider the criteria that I gave you and get to it. <laughs> All right. So that was chapter four, million dollar boundaries and chapter five, million dollar squad. We squatting up and I cannot wait to see the crew grow. All right. So for the challenge this week, let's do a fun exercise, which is, which is inspired, which is exactly the exercise on page 95. She says, here's a fun exercise. Take action on building your community by writing a squad description. It's like a job description, except it's about your dream squad and way more fun. Use it to describe your fantasy squad. In it, share the kind of people you're looking for and what you hope to do together. Here's an example to get your creative flowing. Wanted. Seven badass broads who are interested in making millions, sipping rosé, sharing genius ideas, and net leveling every part of our lives. That's the emotional part, the financial part, the, the health part, all of those important aspects of your life. Also, we will teach each other daily to hype each other up. We will meet monthly to discuss dreams and goals. We will refer clients to each other and unlock doors. We will vacation together and occasionally be available for that. Hey, can you read this real quick, sis? Super important email proof who's in. You know, writing a fantasy squad description helps you clarify exactly what you want. And if desired, you can post this somewhere and attract your dream peeps. My clients have done it and it works. This is a fabulous, ambitious woman out there who is looking for someone like you to be a part of her squad. Get out there and find her because we are stronger to. 
together. I have a few tribes. <laughs> I done told y'all about my wham. We, we, we meet every Monday and we refer people out. We help each other. We ask, what do you think about this? We strategize about real estate. It's absolutely amazing. They support my pod. They share my pod. I support the things they're doing. If I, Just last week, somebody said, hey, I need somebody who licenses in Georgia. Are you? I was like, no, but I got somebody for you. And I gave her my one of my, my wham partners, my weekly accountability meeting partner. So you in the in the crew, I recommend books. I give feedback. There's times people have reached out to me for what would the crew do? Ask advice. Like these are the people. There's someone out there for you, and you just gotta do the work and find them. And if you're if you're doing the work, you're gonna attract the people that's gonna help elevate you. Okay. All right. So let's get into what would the crew do? Ask advice. You can email the crew book club at gmail.com subject ask advice and or you can dm anywhere the crew book club you can literally find us on instagram tiktok and youtube as well and i took this from a headline episode that i was listening to and it, it was from the breakfast club and it said statistics said that people would take a twenty thousand dollar pay cut to be more happy at work <laughs> and i was just like yeah I, I've worked in corporate before and I've worked in environments where I was absolutely happy to be there. The money didn't matter and I was just happy to be there. And I also worked in environments where it's like, if I could go somewhere else and if I had to make a little bit of money or decrease my position to be more happy, to live the life that I want, I would do that. And so what would you take a pay cut for happiness? And it made me think, when it comes to the happiness of it all, I always tell y'all, use your current job as an exit plan, right? Especially for entrepreneurship and for growth. Don't be a quiet quitter. Remember we talked about showing up? Oh, that goes back to who gonna check me boo God is. Money comes with focus and all, doing all things. Don't be a quiet quitter. Learn as much as you can from that job and show up and advance. Use their resources and skills to elevate yourself, to make yourself more attractive to the competition. Use your resources the proper way to curate the happiness that you desire. Okay? You're there for a reason. And I get it. Some people... It's hard. Economically, you have kids. You feel like, I have to stay in this job. You don't have to have to do anything. What you need to do is put yourself in the position to exceed, to get you to where you want to be. Okay? So that happiness comes with uh, with a service to yourself and to your family. Being miserable for money isn't worth it. Being smart is using the resources to get you to the place that you need to be, okay? I just wanted to share that perspective on that headline about would you take a pay cut for happiness? I don't think you have to take a pay cut. I just think you need to do the work to curate your happiness that you desire. Use the resources you have to put you in the places that you need to be, okay? And trust me, that'll feel a whole lot better than taking a pay cut, <laughs> okay okay so you know we're gonna end this episode i did go a little longer but i just felt like all of this was worth saying to you and that was just a little bit i'm telling you there's so many jewels and juices in this book that will have you like oh snap highlighting the whole book okay <laughs> it is on audible which we do have a relationship with them you click the link in the show notes you can get 30 days of a premium experience with audio and listen to the book as well okay so the quote of the week before we um so we can get out of here is from amy Poehler. it was a quote in chapter five it says find a group of people who challenge and inspire you Spend a lot of time with them and it will change your life. All right, crew, continue to hang with the crew. Leave a review for the crew. Share with other people so we can be elevated together. I see y'all here next week on the Crew Book Club podcast. Hey!